Hi everyone, if you're just joining now, I'm Andrea from Yacht Dame. I am super excited to be here with Jared and Vincent. You must know them already from social media. Jared is a huge uh, YouTuber. He has a huge audience and a huge influence when it comes to the yachting industry. He creates beautiful films. Um, it's not only cinematic, he does do video blogs, but his editing is, that's why I actually became a fan a very long time ago. Uh, and Vincent, uh, actually, we did a call recently uh, last week, but you may know him as the guy that teaches you how to sell uh, boats now. He's a serial entrepreneur. He has actually three more things up his sleeve. And if you guys could introduce yourself. So, Jared, can you tell a little bit to the audience? What do you do and where are you? Yeah, sure. I'm in South Africa at the moment after working on board Modi Yacht Orient, which was a, um, a 60 meter charter vessel. Um, but before that, rewinding all the way back, I've been creating content for the last three years, give or take, initially just playing around with it to understand how it worked, um, falling in love with the process of creating, and then found that it really built an audience through the yachting industry. Um, often the things that I took for granted were the things that most people had never seen before, and that's really where um, the YouTube channel and everything really took off. So I started to realize that a passion could actually meet something that I've been doing for a long time and, and kind of combine the two. It doesn't necessarily always have to be just crew aspects. It can just be about the yachting world in general and different boats and sizes and what yacht crew do on a charter vessel for uh, whatever magnitude, be a small sailing boat, be it a, a large vessel like Modi at Orient at 600,000 a week and create content that pushes positivity around what the yacht crew do for that boat um, to encourage further sales, to encourage further uh, charters and just good sort of all round exposure for yachts in general. Very cool. Um, um... Yeah, like I said before, I'm a huge fan. I love it. Everybody that's actually crew or wants to learn how to get be a crew on a yacht has either seen his uh, videos or even reached out because he also responds to all of your YouTube comments. So make sure to comment. He's always on top of that to make sure that you guys actually are getting feedback. It is an industry that has very little out there. So he's one of the people that is pushing content down and making our lives a little bit more public so you actually understand what do we go through? And like you said, a lot of us take for granted the I did work as crew. Right, I didn't right. think that was actually special or anyone wanted to see it. I also worked building yachts and I never thought of taking pictures of a construction site. Like who would want right. to see that? And now those are the ones that get the most engagement, but I'm not at the shipyard anymore, but yeah. <laughs> we yeah, take it's amazing. for granted. We all take little bits and pieces for granted in everything that we do. And because we're so used to seeing it, we think everybody else is. You don't consider the amount of people that are browsing and looking for information. Same in the in the sales side, same in the charter world, same in the in crew. It's, it's all the same. Exactly. Uh, Vincent, can you also give us a little bit of insight? What do you do? Where are you Thank at the you. moment? So I live in Vancouver Island. Originally, I'm from France, as you can see in my accent. I started as a broker 12 years ago when I came in Canada after traveling around the world for a year and a half. And I, I, I did brokerage for a couple of years. And after that, I, I, I had the opportunity just before the crisis hit the previous one in 2008, I sold two yachts, 65 feet and 80 feet. And I was really passionate about the marketing aspect. So I launched a marketing company called Prestige Vision. And since then, we've worked with over 300 shipyards all around the world. So the last 12 years, what I've done is I've just spent my year traveling around the world from boat show to boat show, from shipyard to to shipyard from brokerage house to brokerage house sea trial to sea trial so i gather that experience in the boating industry in the business to business side so within the industry with all the industry professional and four or five years ago i decided to start a blog to share the best uh, sales and marketing practices to share both sales professional and both marketers both sales um people that are involved in marketing and so the response was really good. So we, I ended up starting Yatsis Academy. And since I started Yatsis Academy five years ago, I've trained over 5,000 boats as professional all around the world. So as of today, I have Yatsis Academy, Prestige Vision, who is a marketing company. And also uh, I'm partner in a brokerage firm called BreezeYachting.Swiss and we sell boats from 20 to 40 meters. And we're a small boutique firm. We sell around 10 boats a year, but I've had a lot of fun going back to boat sales, doing that. So that's a quick summary of the activities that I, that, that I do. And of course, social media, and that's why I'm so excited to be with you guys, uh, Andrea and Jared, is a centerpiece of the, the work and the efforts that I make in the three businesses that I have. And I think it's more and more relevant, especially today with what's going on right now, where everybody's stuck 
in the house. I think all face, Facebook um, servers Live. are crashing right now because so many people are trying to access social media. So that's why I'm excited to be here today. And thank you for inviting me. And very nice to meet you finally, Jared, too. Nice so, to meet you, too. I'm super excited because the three of us here, as we mentioned before, do not li live in actually a yachting hub. I'm in New York, Jared is in South Africa, and <laughs> Vincent is in Canada. But three, the three of us have been pushing social media and been creating content on our own, isolated for some time now. Um, uh, so you, we really do depend on digital marketing and all the tools and all the platforms to get our messages across. And then you see this when they are present at the show, they get stopped both of them, I've seen this all the time. They get stopped all the time because through them, they have learned what the industry is all about. And when Vincent mentioned that he's always traveling all over the world, actually he was in a webinar only last week with Bob Dennison. Um, and that's one of the things he said. He's like, you're one of the friends that I'm always checking Facebook to see where the hell are you? <laughs> because he's always moving around with the three uh, companies that he just mentioned before and visiting clients and so forth. Um, um, so that's a little bit of intro of what's happening, why are we here, but now we'll let's go back to what's happening at the moment with coronavirus. And I wanted both, um, both of you to tell me a little bit about how have you been adapting? Because even though we were used to creating stuff isolated, as I mentioned before, um, how has this been affecting your content, your content creation, uh, Jared? To tell you the truth, I'm not really used to creating content in an isolated environment. I rely pretty heavily on being in and around the vessels at the time to try and document as much of a particular process as possible. So if it's a delivery, then I'll document daily if I can to make use of that story of that beginning, the beginning of the delivery, the middle and the end or whatever it is. If it's a charter summer, I try and talk um, and showcase as much of that summer as possible. So I'm, I'm pretty used to, um, to being in the hub of it. Uh, that being said, I have not had an isolation period where I've had the chance to really sit down and build the business aspect of it into what I do. Um, I could have taken advantage of it long ago, but because I've been working as full-time crew, because I've been trying to create content in the evenings, which takes six to hours to edit every time I create a video, and then still to try and have any kind of personal life or downtime, it's been very difficult to build the business aspect into my, um, into my YouTube channel initially when I've been working as full-time crew. So now that I'm back here, my adaptation is actually taking a step back and going, what was the whole point of creating this YouTube channel? What was the point of being able to reach people and, and what other value, value can I offer those individuals now that I've got the time? So recently I hadn't really had the opportunity to respond to comments while I've been on a boat. But now that I'm here, when I post a video, I've commented and responded to every single person. Um, I built in the merchandise aspect of the business in the last week or two, and I'm ready to launch that soon. I'm just about to film a yacht crew course, um, sort of basically going into every single piece of the yachting industry that people don't talk about, product knowledge, um, other aspects that might be targeted towards the yacht crew individuals, as well as building a business and a marketing proposal for um, charter boats and charter owners that, that shows them why it's valuable to have social media and what I do on board yachts, which is usually a no-no. So to tell you the truth, I've recently built a website, recently started the merch aspect, recently got into a variety of different parts of the business side of my YouTube channel that I've never had the chance to do. And that's my way of adapt, um, adapting at the moment. And for someone that actually has done that part, uh, it takes a very long time. So it's good that you have time to actually go back and, uh, and actually structure it so it's actually a more of a business instead of just creation, creation. Um, right. Let's say if you didn't hear that, he said six hours. So he is working full time, capturing video, and then adding six more hours to his day to actually create the videos that you actually see on, uh, online. Yeah. Um, so this, anyone that wants to get into this, this is not just one second. Let me just, I'm in a beautiful place. Let me just throw in the camera and I'm done. That's, that's not real. Um, no. after he uploads also a video, there's like a lot of thing in the behind, in the background that you don't see from tags. When am I posting? When, how am I getting the most reach? There's a lot of stuff when it comes to algorithms and numbers that it's not just like, it's, it's not a thoughtless process. Let's say that. Correct. Um, it's a practice process for a lot of people that don't really know where to start. And, and 
I tell that the, my one advice to people when creating content is upload a hundred YouTube videos and then come and ask me because by that stage, you'll know at what point it worked, what it was like going through that process, what videos did well, what your niche should be. So go and do the groundwork and then come and ask me. Um, and then I'll be able to help you adapt what you've done into what you should be doing. But to try and go from step one and rethink everything, it's often too much. Exactly. Um, Vincent, can you tell us a little bit about how have you been adapting uh, your situation to Corona from doing the, the digital marketing that you already do through your, uh, through your webcam and the whole process? I think one of the main um, things when it comes to adaptation in a period like this is to support the audience that you're serving in, uh, in, in social media. And Jared mentioned the word value, giving value. And I think it's very important and even more relevant in a period like this. So in my case, that I support the B2B side of the boating industry, the first things that I wanted to do actually was two things. Number one was to diagnose and trying to understand. So I, was, I spent as much time as possible on the phone uh, or doing live one-on-one -on -one video with both his professional boats from all around the world to try to understand the situation and trying to understand their pain point. Like what, what, what's their pain point? What do they need? What do they need to fix right now? And once I focus on that part, I quickly switch and pivot to providing value, value by trying to resolve those pain points. So for instance, in my case, that I'm a, a course provider and, and I sell course with Yatsis Academy. I put together a free course, a free webinar that was a 12-step um, step plan to help you deal with the COVID-19 crisis in the boating industry, which was extremely well received. We've got nearly now 1,500 people in the industry that viewed the webinar. I also gave a lot of free courses. I had a lot of courses. And I ended up giving over 100 free courses. And also, I work in the background to put together some things that was relevant, which is a plan of action. Like, what can you do in the next couple of months to, uh, to pivot and to adapt your business to the current situation? So I'm just finished putting this course together. We've got to start to have some people sign up to the course last couple of days, and we're going to start, we're going to start on Friday. So in, in response to your question, in a period like this, it's difficult to adapt because there is so much uncertainty. And it's difficult to, to, uh, to know what to do because we don't know what tomorrow is going to be. And you check the news very often every day, every hour, things are changing. But th there is some important element, which is you got to keep connected to your audience and trying to understand their pain point and trying to resolve their pain points. So that's what I've been trying to, to focus and to help on over the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to share a little bit of yacht same here. Um, uh, when I saw, when I started getting isolated uh, three weeks ago now, I, I realized that the yachting industry actually was avoiding the topic and wasn't talking about it. I understand having a luxury brand uh, attached to a crisis and a pandemic is not the sexiest thing you can put online. So that's when I said, this is my moment. Nobody's talking about it. It's like being, it's like any other entrepreneur, you see a problem nobody's actually addressing it. Why am I not addressing it? So that's when I actually started seeing the numbers I have on, on Instagram are only 2000 people. That's, I, is it even 2000 people? Not even nearly 2000 people. So the fact that I was reaching out and CEOs were seeing my account, why was it? It was because I was listening to the content context. What is happening? What are people listening? Jared does this very well. You can go on to Google and see what are the words that are being searched and what are people actually looking to, to be provided with information of. And I saw that everybody was providing that on other industries and we weren't doing that. And, and Jared and Vincent are actually both fans of my boss who's Gary Vaynerchuk. And he says this all the time, content is king, but context is God. And for that reason, we have to be adapting to what is out there being put out in other messages. What, how are people addressing it? And like Jared said very well, it's just like, and after you actually put the content out, see where are the peaks, where are the highlights? Are people actually rewatching this portion of the video? That means that this resonated with my audience or did it not resonate with the audience? So as Vincent was saying, empathy, yes. Listening, what is being needed to actually create value? And that's the value you have to create. And that actually leads me into the next question. Oh, and by the way, in Yacht Dame, I stopped providing coronavirus information because I feel now everybody's up to date with washing your hands and what you actually have to do. So right now we actually have to move into more of an action of, okay, great, we're going through this pandemic. How can I actually push myself to move forward? 
uh, Jerry is taking the time to actually create the backbone of the business of what he already created uh, as an influencer. How can I actually pivot and take this time to actually when we're, we uh, go through this, um, this crisis, how can I actually propel myself? So again, the question would be is, how have you changed your messaging? Have you changed your messaging and what is it now? Jared, what is you? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one because at the moment, um, you know, none of us have gone through this before. So to try and pretend that any one of us is an expert in this particular field is incorrect. It's impossible. Um, so in, in my sense, that's where, you know, the sense of community comes in. Um, and because we're all in this together and we're unsure of the certainty, if somebody's stuck to be able to help them and be, you know, create a community around that person and spread good vibes is what I've been trying to focus on. Um, you know, I put a, I put a thing out to a few people going, uh, like creating a poll going, how are you doing? Are you good? Are you well? Do you need a call? Are you uncertain? Like what's your situation? And I, and I, you know, offered to phone a few people to just try and bring up their spirits. And so that's kind of how I've, um, how I started to think again, is just going back to, at the end of the day, I've got an audience for a reason and I need to be able to be providing value to those individuals, whether it's through sympathy or through guidance of what I think might be right, or whatever it is, or maybe it's just a chat. Um, that's kind of how, how, how I've been going about anything that I'm doing moving forward. And it can also be entertainment that they're missing at the moment when you say course, uplifting. Absolutely. We're all right now stuck inside. And I read and only, I think it was, this was last week. I really don't know the, num the numbers today, but it was 28% of surge of internet usage. So believe mm -hmm. me, Netflix and Hulu are being <laughs> put through the, through the ringer of, of so many people on yeah. the server. I, so. I tried to divert slightly. I made one video about what I suggest to new crew because I knew that mm -hmm. that's a lot of the messages I was receiving. And I left it kind of up to everybody else because I just didn't know enough and I didn't feel it was my place. I could share guidance on the video that I created with crew saying the industry is not going anywhere and the entire world is push pause. There's no reason why you shouldn't. And then in that case, if you're pushing pause, don't sit and do nothing. He has an, an array, a variety of different information that's going to help you to feel even more prepared when you go back into it. Um, and I imagine that that's what Vincent would be doing as well from the perspective of, okay, so when everything comes back to normal, if it does, this is your plan of action. If it's not, this is what you should be doing. And that's, that's all you can do. If you've got a quiet area here, you could have a busy time here. And just pointing those out to people is maybe enough. Correct. Um, so Vincent, how have you been addressing this? How, is, has your message changed and how have you been adapting? I think change is, is, is understated word in the sense that what we're seeing here is unprecedented. Um, like I, I think, and I've heard that and, and it resonated to me, like I think we're experiencing a forced industrial revolution. Like everything is, is, is changing. The norm, what used to be yesterday is, and, and is totally different today. And um, I think we're going to experience a post-coronavirus era. Like everything after this, this event and right now is going to be totally different from what it used to. There will not be a back to normal because what's happening right now has impacted so many people on a global level that's never happened before in the lifetime of uh, everybody around. So m m the change in my message, I think, is more authenticity. More authenticity because um, we are all in this, we're all in the same boat together. And two words that I've been trying to tell my clients, um, hey, you really need to try to, to, to tap into this human emotion because they, they are very important, is empathy and vulnerability. Empathy because uh, you need, you, and you mentioned that, Andrea, before, and you told me the other day, and then I, I even wrote that in my webinar because I thought it, it was very important. You said, you told me we were over the phone last week and you said, you need to address the elephant in the room. And there were still a lot of people that weren't doing it. Mm -hmm. right? So not only addressing the elephant in the room, but also you need to, um, you need to make sure they're okay with it. Right? So empathy is a number one. And number two is vulnerability. We have the chance as industry professionals, we work for the wealthiest people in the world. We work for the top 1%. And we need, it's a time, we, we all, of course, we're always supposed to serve them, but we are supposed to serve them. And we're supposed to tell them, hey, look, I know it's a difficult right now, but I'm going to need your help. 
but I'm, guess what? I'm going to get your back. I have your back. So if you need anything, so you can reach out to, to your clients in the body industry. That's what I tell my, my, my customers, my, my students in Booking Yachts Academy. I say, reach out to your clients. Say, if you need anything, if you want me to go wash your boat, if you want me to check your line, if you want me yeah. to, um, to, to check your battery charger, if you want me to give you a free boat wash, I will do it for you. But in return, if you think of someone to help you fix your boat, sell your boat, I, I'm asking you that you think of me. And the, the aspect of vulnerable will keep, your, will keep you in business because we need to be connected. And so I think, yeah, authenticity is very important. And that's why I've been trying to adapt my message. Yeah, um, I mentioned to Vincent before that what I've been reading about what other companies like banking, like uh, JP Morgan, Dropbox, and one of these, you know, Fortune 500 companies, what are they doing? And it's exactly that. They have changed all their mailing. The mailers are not about product. What, a, what am I doing now? It's more like, what do we can do for you? We're creating free content. So at least you're either, like you're saying, addressing the elephant in the room and you have a little bit of a notion into like, okay, this is where economics is going to. This is where you should be restructuring your finances, your mortgages, and so on and so on. So it's definitely going into how I can help you. And the biggest thing, and all the big companies know this, is people don't remember what you're doing, but they remember the, the feeling you actually gave them. So when this is gone, what they're doing right now is building trust. And in, let's say if it's July, September, whenever it is, we are going to remember that person that actually reached out and helped me. And now I created that bond with them. So right now there's this huge opportunity to actually reach out and be remembered as that person that actually helped. Because while other people are like looking around, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? If you're that person that reaches, the, gives your hand the, uh, the beginning, everybody's going to remember. For example, when, I think it was Louis Vuitton, um, LVMH, when they converted uh, their, uh, their factories from producing expensive fragrances to actually creating antibacterial. Yes, you know what? Now many companies are doing it and many high-end uh, clothing manufacturers are creating masks. But we will remember the first one that actually did this, that created the movement. So what are you actually providing? Um, I know that's a lot to take in. How can actually provide value? We think of this all the time, not with or without a crisis. We're always, and that's the reason you both are very successful what you're doing and why your audience actually enjoys actually coming back and you have repeat customers. Um, yes, I, I would like to add something before I forget you, 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 how to provide value. And I want to adapt it to this webinar, which is we're talking about uh, social media. The question we need to ask yourself is how can I provide value digitally? Correct. How can I provide value digitally? Because you are at home, you're stuck at home. You can't, you can't maybe do grocery for your clients or maybe you're not in a possibility to do something physically, but how can I provide value digitally? I think is a very relevant question that we need to ask ourselves, when, especially when you are leveraging social media. Um, going into that right now, um, what frequently asked questions are you receiving at the moment? I'm sure both of you have, your phones are exploding and Jared actually just came back from not having a very good Wi-Fi reception. So he'll get back to you in a couple of days. But Jared, uh, what are the frequently asked questions you're receiving now through the crisis? Oh, I'm receiving a lot of this from different sectors, you know, from crew, they're asking me like, when does this end? And when it does, what's it going to be like? Because people are going, um, obviously I can't answer that question because I haven't been there, but at the same time, I can provide you with an idea of, you know, there were a lot of crew, especially in South Africa and Australia, um, in America that were just about to jump on the plane to get to Europe Correct. for the summer. So you've got all these people in standby and you've got, uh, perhaps a variety of empty boats that have lost crew or gone down to skeleton crew. So there's probably a lot of boats out there that are sitting at them with no crew. And so there's going to be a huge, bunch of people waiting and then there's going to be a bunch of people without jobs that are already experienced looking to come into the industry. So I'm receiving a lot of questions about guidance on, on for crew going, what do I do? What's it going to be like? Um, and then from the, from the boating enthusiast stage, it's just going, you know, are yachts different because they float on water? Does everything just kind of carry on as normal? Is it the safest place to be? Are the boat owners coming to join the boat to get away from the quarantine? Right. I'm receiving a lot, of, a lot of questions about that, wondering how that's working. But of course, 
you know, that's not the case. I don't know, maybe from you, Vincent, but from what I've heard, obviously, if you're a billionaire, you want to be on your boat being taken care of, but the crew can't get proper um, food without having interaction. They can't necessarily get their boats back in the water. They can't move from port to port. Um, right. And they can't cross the Atlantic to get to the meds. So effectively, you're going to sit at the dock. You may as well be at, in the comfort of your home. Um, and I don't know if that's what you're finding as well. But those are the lines of questions that I'm receiving with regards to FAQ. I hadn't thought of it from that side. Um, uh, what kind of questions are you receiving at the moment? Vincent? Very, very similar to Jared. Uh, clients are reaching out to me and they're trying to ask me questions. Like they're trying to find out what, what do I think? And I'm like, well, my opinion, unfortunately, is not going to make a difference in this situation. <laughs> and I can't predict the future. Um, and I, so I try to say, stop thinking about what's going to happen because nobody knows. And because this crisis is not an economic crisis, it's, a, it's affecting our health. And it's affecting, it's not a social crisis neither because it's affecting everyone on the social scale from the billionaire to the guys that live in the slum. So it's affecting everybody. And we have such a level of uncertainty because we've never seen that before. So I, I try to tell them, I say, look, I'm not in a position to answer, unfortunately. I don't know what to do, but I know how I can maybe guide you on how to prepare for the worst. And I think that's what you need to do right now is to prepare. And you mentioned something very, very, uh, a few minutes ago, Andrea, which is like the importance of, of um, you know, connecting. How does that make you feel? That's the right thing to do because maybe you're going to lose your job, but maybe in six months when people are going to hire back, if you are the one that made them feel good, if you are the one that got their back, if you are the one that were there during this difficult moment, you're probably going to be one of the first one they're going to hire. Right, so th this is what you need to focus on. Unfortunately, nobody knows what tomorrow it's going to be, and unfortunately, from what I've seen so far, every morning I've woke up and has been worse, worse and worse and worse. But my mindset, I've been trying to make it better every day, and it's more and more difficult because every day I wake up, I get bad news, and I'm like, ah, and I need my mindset to push it to get better. But I have no choice because I don't want to go in that negative spiral. <laughs> So every day I'm trying to pump myself to be as to try to see uh, to put myself in a positive environment as much as I can to go forward in this moment of uncertainty. Um, my frequently asked questions have been uh, more in terms of news related, but on Yacht Day, I, I do post a lot about what's happening and not only in yachting right now, more uh, geared to coronavirus and how is it affecting us. And the typical questions I get is like, what is the travel ban in the US? Or what are the restrictions? And the only thing I can do is just send back a link because this is being updated daily. I really don't know. And I know Jared had this because we had, I think that was the same story on all our, uh, on all the Instagram people. Um, uh, was that someone was trapped in an airport. They couldn't actually leave the airport. They couldn't, they were sleeping in one of the, what is it? One of the gates yeah, and so one on. One of the lounges for six to eight hours and the rest of the time they had to go back to the, um, to the terminal for six days or something. So those are the questions I'm receiving. How do I move this? How, what are the latest? And I actually do not know. The only thing I can do is send back because it is a time of uncertainty that actually even the government doesn't know. Every time they go, I think, to the podium, they make a last decision of what the restrictions will be until the next time they, that they're on. Trump is like doing press releases almost on a daily basis. So daily, we actually see if there's a change or not. And I'm sure the people that get to the border or the ones that are checking your passport are still uncertain. It's like, oh, are we, pro uh, we aligning with B1 visas to actually go through today? Or is it only residents or is it only... So there's a lot of uncertainty when people are right now trying to actually get home. These are my frequently asked questions. Um, same as Vincent, I, the only thing I'm doing is trying to power through to get to the next day or the next day. But more importantly, I, I don't know if like as the news, I actually went through a roller coaster of like, oh my God, alarming. This is what's happening everywhere. We're all, it's like the end of the world. It's just like go into BBC like it's the next, you know, Game of Thrones. But uh, after that, it was like, okay, this seems to be our new reality. I'm just thinking we're like the Jetsons, that we just don't see land anymore. How can we actually live in the new reality and prepare ourselves when this actually ends? So that's where I am at the moment. No, right now, being in, in a digital marketer, 
if I don't know how to do a webinar, a live stream, or everything that's right now what's on trend, the moment this goes away in a second, everybody will have surpassed me te uh, technically wise, and I can't allow that. So that's where I am, and that's where I'm teaching uh, myself to be at. So um, again, like Jerry, you said very well, that you're taking this time now to readdress your business side because for the first time you are now not allowing yourself to be on lockdown, but you're pushed into the scenario that it's pushing you to rethink your business. So going back to that, what do you guys have as an advice for people to take advantage from what you're seeing on yourself as your own different kind of content creator? What do you advise to people to do? Or better yet, you said this, Sarah, that maybe you should have done this business part a long time before, but now I'm forced to do it. What are those things that you wish you could have done and now that you're on lockdown, now you're like, okay, let me check that off my bucket list that I've been pushing aside. What should people yeah. be taking advantage? I can, I can answer both of those questions. You know, before, before my YouTube channel took off, I, I filmed and edited and uploaded 85 videos before my first one did well. So for me, it was the learning curve of understanding how to do it. So when it did do well, because in my mind, I knew I was going to get to where I wanted to go, that I could then produce quality content when there was an audience. So for anybody that's trying to create, whether it's media, whether it's learning how to write correctly, whether it's knowing how to do podcasts and where to put them, whatever it is you need to be doing an abundance of it and try and do it daily. You've got the time now. It doesn't matter how many times you film your living room or do a podcast about a different topic. As long as you're doing it to learn how to do those particular things, um, you're going to be better off when this comes to an end. So for me, my suggestion would just be to find your niche of what, what media form you enjoy and then learn everything about it that you can. Whether in my, in my sake, I'm doing Photoshop courses, I'm going into After Effect courses to better my effects when I'm creating videos. So there's a lot of things like that that I'll be doing now that I think other people could be doing if, when they have the time. Mm -hmm. And when I was creating content in the beginning, Every time I made a video, I just added one new skill. So if it yeah. was learning how to do a transition, I'd make a video and add one skill and then publish that one. Do the next one, add the skill I did before and another one and then do the next one. And by 85, I'd known how to do a variety of different skills in that particular field. And that's yeah. kind of what led me to having the editing that you, spoke of, that you spoke about. But to tell you the truth, since my YouTube channel has taken off, I've learned very little more than what I had from that day. Mm -hmm. um, other than, of course, the YouTube stuff, because once it started to take off, I then focused on the content. So now it's going back to focusing on the learning attributes so that the next time I come back, I'm just that much further ahead. So that's what I would suggest to people doing now. From a business perspective, um, when I started or when it took off, I'd done everything that I could because I needed to know where this was going to go. But if mm -hmm. I was to go back and say, what could you do, you know, in a, in a, in a marketing stage, when you're in media and content creation, there's always going to be a variety of different media um, forms that could break out into branches of different income revenue streams through Amazon affiliate links, through mm -hmm. merchandise, through um, understanding podcasts and the ad revenue that's generated from the podcast audio that's come from your video. There's a huge different array of, um, of ways that us as creators have to make money because YouTube AdSense is just not going to cut it. So yeah. for me, how much is it that you get paid per, per view? three dollars per thousand views maybe if you're lucky and it's changed, exactly you know? so, um you've got to really do substantial uh, view count to be able to earn anything major um, mm -hmm. and when i'm not creating content like now you'll see everything dips and then it takes a while for it to build back up again so that's why i'm now playing with different forms of social media i'm, I'm trying to understand how tiktok works because i don't want to be like left behind you know so there's, know. there's other attributes of, of of media and understanding so that when i leave this quarantine period, I'm just that much further ahead. So you need to think about those things. What's going to benefit you at that point? Is it your website? Is it compiling a hundred different emails so that when this comes back to normal, that you've got the people that you need to contact? And those are the things that I'm doing every day at the moment. That's great. I love the, the advice and I actually do that too, but it, it felt a little bit like I was drowning every time I would edit. It was like, oh, but did you see that transition the other time? Okay, next time I'll do that. So you add one. So you think that by video 10, you're going to be like, I've learned everything. No, if you keep adding one little thing, yes, at the end, you're like going to be the best out there. And you have surpassed many of the videos you've seen from other people you've learned from. But it means you're pushing yourself every time you edit. It's not like a little template that you're just producing and just sending out into the world. That is what it takes and to it actually. Takes time. I've spent five or six hours doing an intro and deleted the intro after doing it. Like it, um, it just, thank you for saying that because I do that so often. <laughs> 
So it's one of those things where you've just got to, you've got to just try and fail and try and fail and then just progress better. Great. Thanks. Uh, Vincent, same thing. Um, what you wish you had learned before and now you're taking the time to actually harness that tool or how are you actually changing your, uh, your business? So the moment we're out of here, you actually have propelled yourself um, from all I your competitors. I think that um, two, two aspects and they are totally different sides of the spectrum. One is more social and because I have to do it digitally now, it's, it's through social media. So I'm trying to push more social media, getting out of my comfort zone. And there is something I like to say is if you're not uncomfortable improving your boat sales, you're doing something wrong. Like, yes, it will suck. You will be uncomfortable being in front of the camera, but you need that in order to grow, right? So unless it's uncomfortable, you know, you know you're not doing something good. So trying to push myself to be more uncomfortable, doing webinar, doing live video, doing things like this. So more social, but also on the other side, more personal. I try to take more time to reach people one-on-one. -on -one. I try to take more time to pick up the phone and call people or send them a, a, a personal message. So, so those two things. And when it comes to social media, I've been, I've been trying to push social media in the boating industry for, for myself, my companies for, for now pretty much 10 years or like I was one of the earliest guys to have a hundred thousand fan page, for instance, on Facebook. I was one of the early guys to have uh, a million dollar YouTube channel. I think we have maybe six or six million view now on our YouTube channel and around 20,000 uh, followers, but has been very slow. The growth went high and then I kind of let it go and, and I never really had the opportunity to, to, to bring it up again. So I'm just thinking, well, maybe those are good, good times now to restore, to reconnect because changes uh, go so fast and especially in the social media world, you always need to be more and less updated. If you don't do YouTube for six months, chances are you're going to be uh, you're going to forget what works and, and in six months from now, your channel is going to be very difficult to go up again. So that's what I, I've, I've been trying to do, to reconnect with my social channel, but also to try to be personal on the other side and try to reach people one and one. And very often it was through uh, social uh, apps like through messengers or WhatsApp or LinkedIn. Um, so those two things and some things that Jared mentioned, I really, uh, I really like was a hundred video because it's funny because last year I decided, well, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of things that are in the business to business world. So I'm trying to educate uh, people in the boating industry with business sales and marketing tips, but I'm like, I'm going to go back to doing walkthrough video. I'm going to actually start doing walkthrough video. And one of my first goals was like, I want to do hundred of them to try to get better. So I think so far I'm close to 80 now, but I've been trying to, so 20 more and I, and I contact you for advice, Jared. No worries. Okay. It'll probably happen so in those 80. I 85, right? I had to yeah. do 85. So you nearly there. Yeah. Good. So, but yeah, no, that was a very good advice and I totally agree. I mean, there is no point asking for advice if you don't do something, right? So try to do at least 50, 100 of them and trying to, and then after that, you, you will eventually improve, get better. But people were saying once instant gratification. They want to post three videos on YouTube and have a hundred thousand follower YouTube channel. It's just not possible. And uh, it needs to take time. And right now is a perfect time to take the time because you are at home, because you have that extra time to invest in yourself and develop some social media skills. Yeah, um, that's all very good. Um a personal note from the office. If you ever ask something and you haven't Googled it extensively, please uh, be ready for that slap that says Google is your mother. No one will answer. It's more like, if I can find this in two seconds, I'm going to give you one of those look and you don't want one of those looks at VaynerMedia and went <laughs> next to Gary Vaynerchuk. So I tend to exhaust YouTube's how to's before I ask anybody and what that's one of the biggest things how am I going to tell you what your audience wants if you haven't posted enough to actually get stats and to get a feel of what they're actually responding to again one video doesn't make you have an audience um, for anybody um, well thanks again before we wrap up I wanted uh, you guys to share how can people reach you and how can people follow you and if you want to give a little bit of insight of what you will, will be producing on your uh, your pages during this time. Um, Jared? 
Yeah, sure. Um, my name is my profile. A lot of people think it's usually falling under business or like yacht crew or like for your sake, yacht dame. Um, but mine's just Jared Watney and I'm a fan of trying to build a personal brand. So it'll probably remain that through everything. Um, Instagram, YouTube, and now TikTok. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But otherwise, um, yeah, content coming up is, is, you know, content plan coming up first, now coming up, I'll let you know. But the plan purpose was always um, moving forward was to showcase a variety of different yachts um, and the more the inside operations of those, those particular yachts from a crew standpoint and from a guest standpoint um, on boats ranging of all sizes in different parts of the world. So the idea is to really um, remove the code that is not understanding how the different boats and different sizes and different types work um, and, to, and to be able to just show all aspects of yachting. So that's what's coming up. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vincent, how can people reach you? How can they find you? So for myself, it's the same. It's my personal name, Vincent Finetti. It's the easiest way to reach me because I have several companies. It might be complicated if I give you all the names. But if you go to Vincent Finetti on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you will find my bio and you'll find a ramification to uh, the other companies that we have, Breeze Yachting, the Swiss Prestige Vision and Yachts Academy. My plan right now is to support and help and provide value digitally to my community by helping them navigate those very choppy water right now, keeping them motivated, keeping them sane, keeping them uh, the best, giving them the best uh, skills available that they can have to market and sell boats into the environment, which is difficult. That's why you need to invest the time to do it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And for me, um, I'm Andrea. You can find my information all over recording to yachting under the name Yacht Dame. Also, if you type like Vincent, Andrea Tegliferro, all my Instagram accounts that I'm not gonna say, but they're like five different ones, they all have Andrea Tegliferro on it. So with my name, um, uh, you will find all of them. So it depends on what you're actually looking for. What I'm trying now to, even though I went to this, like, what should I do in the future kind of like philosophical um, moment there, I will be creating content that is either helping you know anything about digital marketing, anything that I learned for myself right now, how did I finally manage to do this webinar? It was a couple of YouTube videos for it. I will do a video so you can actually do it and skip all the, the hours I spent on it. That's on one, so I actually, you can become digitally in this time that we're away. And the other way is that I'm going to start bringing people like Vincent and Jared to talk and tell you how they are going through the crisis. So it's pretty much yachting through the, through the coronavirus time. So we can all um, support each other, learn from what everybody's doing and keep pushing harder until we actually get through this. So thanks again, everybody for joining. Thanks so much. Um, Vincent, nice to meet you. Nice to I have meet a you feeling too, there's going to be a lot of boats coming on the market soon, so you can be a very wealthy man in future. Uh, well, I'm trying to provide value, as I said, and nice meeting <laughs> you. I look forward to seeing more nice video from you. Thank and you uh, thanks, Andrea, for putting this together.